All right, so let's put all those ideas together. So let's look at another data set here. So we've got some information that's telling us from, from 1977 to 2016, we're looking at the number of power boats registered in the state of Florida and the number of manatee deaths. All right, so maybe you would think there would be some sort of association here. All right, so you think more boats on the water, right, more, more manatees dead. So I'm going to do this in Minitab. Right? Minitab has some, some pretty decent regression tools here. All right, so again, the first, kind of the basic things we want to do. So here we've got in Minitab, we've got the data over here. The basic things we want to do are things like go to graph, scatter plot, just simple scatter plot. Now here I do have to be careful with what I want my X and what I want my Y to be. Now we're thinking the more boats registered, probably the more deaths. All right, so I'm going to use so just notice mini tab has y first and then x. All right, so here comes my scatter plot. Looks linear, looks positive, about what we would expect. So let's find our correlation. All right, mini tab has it in a pretty easy spot. Stat, basic statistics. It's got a correlation button right there. Now remember, it doesn't really matter the order that I put x, what I call x, what I call y for our correlation coefficient, or r. Alright, so very strong correlation here, 0.945. Extremely strong correlation. But that's how we get all this basic output in Minitab. Right? But we want to take it further, we want to actually look at this regression model. Right? Okay, so one way to do this in Minitab, again, kind of just a basic way, we can make our fitted line plot. So I'm going to go here to stat, regression, and this first option, fitted line plot. Again, Y comes first. We wanted that to be deaths. Our predictor was going to be power boats. I'm going to leave all of my other options here. Just going to leave my default options. All right, so this gives us a little more information. And mainly, it gives us that regression equation here. It gives us our scatter plot. It shows us it's positive. Now one thing to remember when we're doing this in, in Minitab, unfortunately, this fitted line plot, it gives us a ton of information, but it doesn't necessarily give us R. Okay, it, but it, what it does give us is R squared. Now we can reverse engineer R from that, okay, but just make sure that you are careful because like here we have a positive relationship. So all I would have to do is take the square root of that to find R. What if I had a negative relationship take the square root and I would have to make R negative. Okay, so that's something to look out for there. So again, there's a, a lot of calculating and things going on behind the scenes with our software that we really don't need to get into, but we need to know how to use this information. All right, so let's interpret this line. So what does that mean? Well, let's, let's start with the slope. Okay, so our slope was this number, 0.1358. And now remember that this is the number of power boats registered in thousands. So that means for every thousand power boats registered, right, we'd expect this many manatees to die. Or what, even if I, if I move this decimal, if I move this over one decimal place, and I said, okay, that means for every 10,000 power boats registered, maybe it'd make a little more sense to say one and a half, about one and a half manatees will be killed. All right, what about the y-intercept here? Well, our y-intercept is negative 46.75. Is that meaningful? Is that useful to us? Well, we don't really have the data here on what would happen if there was zero registered. Looks like our smallest number is somewhere around 450,000. So we don't know exactly what would happen if zero, but, but what this is telling us is maybe more manatees would actually be around. Not sure how useful that is to us though because we don't have the data. All right, another big thing that we want to do with regression right, is using that formula to predict what's going to happen. So what if I'm working for for the state of Florida and I'm expecting 800,000 boats to be registered next year? 
So I want to know, okay, how many manatees do I expect to die? So take that 800, plug it into our formula, and that's telling us we'd expect around 62. Now in Minitab, here's how we do it. Okay, so we actually have to go here to Stat Regression, and we're going to have to go to the second regression window. Okay, this is where we, we get the little more complicated regression stuff. All right, so I'm going to go to Fit Regression Model. Now it's got more options, but we're still still doing simple linear. So our response, right, is still deaths, and our predictor, power boats. And it's a continuous predictor, or a, a quantitative, numerical predictor. Now let's just keep everything default. And what this does in Minitab is when I click OK, it stores that regression model in the system. It gives us a bunch of information, which we'll see what all this means later. But all we wanted to do, because right now what we're trying to do is predict what's going to happen. Right now, now that I've done all that, all we're trying to do is predict what's going to happen when 800,000 boats are registered. Okay, so from here, I go back to the second regression screen. And some of these stuff, this stuff that was grayed out earlier, now we have the option to here predict. I'm going to type in 800. And let's see what mini tab tells us. So it tells us for setting equal to 800, that means x equal to 800, our fit or our prediction is about 61 or about 62. And that, that agrees with what we found when plugging in to our formula. All right, so again, lots of calculations going on behind the scenes and all these different, different formulas and stuff that mini tab is plugging into. All right, but most of the time for a regression, we're not so interested in plugging into these formulas, especially if we have large data sets. Right? That's something we leave up to technology. Right? But what we're interested in is what does all this stuff mean? Right? And what's, what's appropriate here? Right? We'll see in the next video that all these tools are very powerful, right? but they're also very easy to misuse. Okay, So we'll follow that up on that in our next video. Right? But I hope this example was helpful. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.